is full of famous men and women who have accomplished great feats of leadership, responsible for building mighty empires, waging triumphant wars, and conquering the hearts of their followers. However, history is littered with just as many leaders that are equally as famous for doing exactly the opposite. Some leaders find themselves in a position of power and possess little to no skills in the field of leadership. As a result, they go down in history for their infamy, when maybe they shouldn't have been in the driver's seat to begin with. Today on His and Hers History, we look at the life and leadership of one such infamous leader, Caligula, the Roman Empire's most depraved leader. Hello and welcome to His and Hers History. I'm your host, Aaron, and this is my co-host, Stephanie. Hello. How are you, Steph? Pretty good. You're looking very nice today. Oh, thank you. For this completely audio medium <laughs> where no one can see us. What's that mean for our other episodes? What do you mean? What, what are you referring to if I look nice today? No, it's just you're very dulled up today. Do you, do you not like my Audi? No. My I, corky Audi that I usually that wear? That you usually wear? No, that, that's very acceptable. Well, I can't talk. <laughs> I'm not exactly wearing anything of note. Too flash. I like it. Yeah, you look pretty good you. today too. Okay. Before, <laughs> getting straight into it, before I begin, if you are new to this podcast, uh, I'll catch you up to speed. Each week, one of either myself or Steph bring a historical topic to the podcast, either a person, place, or an event, and we present said historical topic. The only catch is the host presenting knows all the facts, hopefully, and the host listening knows nothing at all. By doing this, we can have a lighthearted look at the past with genuine reactions, and you guys can have a laugh along with us as we dissect and potentially ruin history. So, uh, the Roman Empire is chock-a-block full of famous emperors who were considered excellent leaders, who accomplished many feats of greatness during their reigns, and I'm referring to such names as Augustus Trajan, I think his name is, and Marcus Aurelius, I've definitely heard of him, and many other famous leaders. However, there were just as many leaders that were remembered for their feats of not so much greatness. Did you just say that were remembered? What? You said that were remembered. <laughs> I apologise. That were remembered. <laughs> yeah. Membered is a word that you and I say sometimes. From South Park. Yeah, it is from South Park. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, many leaders that were remembered for their it. feats of not so much greatness. Caligula being one of them. <laughs> so before we begin, leaders, when you learn about them, like at school and that, you always learn about mostly the good ones, don't you? The ones that have achieved good things. You, you I think learn. you hear about the good side of the ones that have achieved a lot. Yeah, that's the, true. It's, history's great, Aaron. There's not that's just right, because there's bad. some leaders that were seen as... Great, like Churchill comes to mind, was seen as a great leader, but he has some dark things in there, like apparently he was quite racist mm. and things like that. And but I remember my history teacher telling me um, that if Hitler had died at a certain point, he would have been oh, remembered he, as a... He was an amazing... <laughs> now, don't take this out of context. He was an amazing <laughs> leader be before this. all the Nazi stuff. I'm sure Whoa. while... Listen, I'm sure while he was building the country up, he was doing horrible things, but he took Germany from basically the oh, bottom rung are... and no just listen hear me out <laughs> he took them from the bottom rung and he propelled them to become a superpower now if he hadn't have been a psychopath and done all the things he'd done he could have potentially been one of the great leaders but as we know he was mentally unhinged i just saved myself there i hope did i oh, i don't think so i think there's oh, lots of I think things we, i think that... we might just get on with let's move on <laughs> that was supposed to be a light-hearted discussion uh, we're supposed to be laughing stiff uh, but instead you're uh, uh, oh. okay so, Caligula, part one, a not so humble beginning. Caligula was born, now here we go with the pronunciation again, Gaius Julius Caesar Germanicus in 12, is it CE? We figured out in a previous episode. I believe, it's CE, I believe, yeah. so, I believe so. So he was born in 12 CE to a renowned and popular, popular sorry, Roman general Germanicus and his mother Agrippina the Elder. So I've got to stop picking um, mm. such complicated names. <laughs> Caligula was the youngest of three, and in keeping with that, he was seen as the apple of his parents' eye. So much so that as a child, he was made to wear tiny armour that close, closely resembled his father's, who was a Roman general, and he was given the nickname Caligula, which translates to little boots. <laughs> so his parents dressed him up like a child. So you probably see parents today, like, you know, mm. I'm thinking of like trades people, if they're a builder, they get their son or daughter a little, I'm a little tradie shirt. Yep. So basically they did that. <laughs> And they dressed him up in armour. So it was like the Instagram parents before Yeah, Instagram. basically, yeah, that's right. <laughs> he was super famous and, oh, they were super famous parents. Like, we're just going to dress our child up. Like okay? us. So they're weird. Keep mm, that in mind. Okay. That's a weird thing to do, it I think. It is a weird thing. I believe so, okay. yes. 
So he lived the majority of his childhood with the, where his father was stationed for work at the Rhine, which was, at the time was the northernmost inland frontier of the Roman Empire, along the River Rhine, which travels through the countries like Germany, modern-day Germany. He did so until his father contracted malaria in Egypt and died in the province of Syria, which is not the most noble of deaths for a Roman general, I must say. He'd probably rather die in battle if you're mm, someone like him. But maybe. He got malaria and died anyway. <laughs> his father was so popular and well thought of that the entire population of Rome turned out to receive his ashes. Everyone except the emperor at the time, Tiberius, which is a rather odd, odd thing, I would have thought. Um, I would have thought your emperor would turn out for one of your best generals, mm. maybe, cause seeing as he works for you and he's mm. done a good job. But he'll feature in our story a bit later on. Side note number one. Already I feel that um, Caligula was doomed for failure because he's the third son of Germanicus, a mighty Roman general who was seen as like a massive superstar for the time. And he was third in line for anything of value that comes up. And his parents saw him as like this little plaything, and they dress him up just to amuse themselves. So were the other two children before him both male? Yes. Ah. Yes. So yeah, two older brothers. So he's sort of like the third in line. It feels like... um, with the royal family, I guess. The wild like, child. Or always yeah, if you're like the one that's sort of, you're not really in line for anything much. Yeah, your life, like what is, what is the purpose of your life? You're sort of in the shadow Ooh. of everyone. Yeah, so we spoke about his brothers. Well, his brothers won't be an obstacle, obstacle for much longer. And his little dress-up parties will feature later on in the podcast. <laughs> so after his father's death, Cal- Caligula's life changed drastically. Tiberius, the fellow I mentioned earlier, was the current... Uh, Roman emperor and he was an elderly man who would soon be on the way out as such he didn't do much ruling in the final period of his life instead he spent most of his time lounging at his villa in Capri enjoying a semi-retired life of luxury any decision making was left up to his second in command Sejanus enter another his and hers history villains (laughs) that's right I'm bringing it back it's been a few weeks it's been missing but the His and Hers History villain is back. I think I only did it in the first first or second episode. <laughs> Two of them anyway. Another side note. Before I tell you about this guy, I just want to mention that he gives off serious Jafar from Aladdin vibes, and you'll soon see what I mean. You know Jafar you, from yeah, Aladdin. Yeah, you love that reference. Well, He's like the ultimate well, bad guy, isn't he? He is, but this guy, you'll soon find out that he's pretty much, he sort of plays the character of Jafar in this. Well, I do think. I think anyway. <laughs> Part two, dodging death. So Janus, who was the second in command, who was making all the decisions, saw Caligula and his brothers as a threat against his possible move to the throne once the current emperor passed away. So he set about having them taken out one by one, while Tiberius was off snoozing on his no-doubt lavished couch. So Janus had to wait until Tiberius's mother, Livia, passed away. Uh, as she was quite fond of the boys and the family in general and was seen as their protector. However, when she eventually died in 29 CE, the game was afoot. So she was like there. She was the only thing standing in the way because she was still sort of with it, I guess. This Tiberius bloke had no clue what was going on. So immediately, Sir Janus set about under the relaxed nose of Tiberius, imprisoning all of the family members, the mum and her boys, and we know that the dad's dead, Mum was flogged to death, so much so she was flogged so hard that she lost an eye. Oh my god. And then she died, so she was whipped, yeah. Uh, Caligula's brother Drusus was starved to death in prison, and he even tried to eat the stuffing of his mattress. He was that um, hungry and insane. And the poor fellow, the third brother, I couldn't get his name. Sadly, he committed suicide, so he sort of maybe thought. Which brother? The third brother. Oh, sorry, second brother. Yeah, second brother. Say. The third brother's Caligula. <laughs> The second brother, um, I couldn't find his name, but um, sadly he committed suicide. So he saw the writing on the wall and uh, got himself out of there. So Caligula was surely next. However, he was saved before he could be knocked off by the semi-retired Tiberius, who actually decided to have a look at the goings-on of his empire and found that his second-in-command was a murderous his-and-hers history villain that needed to be dealt with as swiftly as possible. Tiberius had Sejanus hung for his treachery and Caligula was saved. I was going to say, is that like super illegal what he was doing? Absolutely. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're the emperor, you can do that. You can have anyone executed Maybe. for any reason, I suppose. And you'll find out later on that that's just the case. So, yeah. Where was I? 
Yeah, so Caligula was then um, appointed as the imperial heir to the throne and ordered to live with Tiberius in Capri. Tiberius must have felt sorry for Caligula because he was moved in with the emperor and became his little underling. And you would think that his life would become a lot less stressful now, but it only got worse. While living with Tiberius, Caligula was harshly scrutinized for any form of disloyalty, regardless of his intentions and no matter the size of the discretion. So I'll just add quickly that the reason he was um, put in as the heir to um, the Roman Empire is Tiberius had no sons or daughters. And because his father was a great Roman general, it made sense for him to be the next in line. So he spent the next few years of his life wondering, wondering if he was going to be executed for doing something that may have been out of his control entirely. Eventually, however, Tiberius did pass away. And just like that, the Roman emperor had his new leader. Old mate Little Boots was on his way back to Rome to take his rightful place on the throne. So he's had quite the upbringing so far. Mm, it sounds like there might be some mental damage within uh, this young Interesting man. you should say <laughs> that. Interesting you should say that because part three, illness or madness. Mm. After these events, Caligula fell ill and was bedridden for several weeks, delirious and feverish. So this is a few months into his reign. Those around him at the time believed it was as a result of a nervous breakdown as he had been on the edge for years and all the pressure had finally caught up with him. Um, side note, it's interesting to note that during the time of his illness, the empire continued to flourish without a leader and ran as per usual. I don't know why they didn't just keep doing that and just got rid of the emperor altogether. <laughs> it seemed like the empire ran fine when there wasn't a leader there because Tiberius wasn't there for a bit, the previous... Roman Emperor and the Empire ran fine. Now this guy was sick and it ran fine. So why do they need why did they even need a leader? Like I'm sure a, there's a reason. Like a figurehead, yeah. Well, I don't think it's it's worth it. <laughs> Finally, after several weeks, Caligula was well enough to rise and start leading his people. However, his disposition had changed drastically. It was believed that he had awoken a madman and set about writing his name into the record books for all the wrong reasons. Another side note, it's worth noting that from this point on, everything we are about to talk about in relation to Caligula was written by those who were responsible for the end of his short reign. Mm -hmm. So I don't know about you, Steph, but I wouldn't write positive things about someone I didn't like and someone that I removed from a job. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts? History is written by the victim. Uh, that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. So I mentioned earlier how the empire had ran smoothly for the short time he was out of action. Well, Caligula recognised this, and his first course of action as emperor was to go to war with the Senate and make both the Senate and the people of Rome dependent on his rule, which turned out to be a fatal mistake that was doomed for failure. You so don't mess with the Senate. That's it. So basically what he tried to do is put himself above everything mm. so that he became like judge, jury, executioner, and no one could touch him sort of thing. Which I guess he had the power to do because he was an emperor. And for whatever reason, they needed an emperor. God, God knows why. And I don't blame him because at this point of his short life, he's found out that he's expendable like his older brothers. So he probably tried to engineer a way for himself to become indispensable so that he couldn't just be offed by the first guy that could get close to him. Mm -hmm. So it seems like a logical sort of thing to do. I don't, I don't really blame him for doing it. Part four, the juicy bits. Now, rather than go through every phase of his life with a fine-tuned comb, I'm just going to condense his time as a ruler of Rome into some short stories. His greatest hits, if you will. Caligula, the greatest hits. <laughs> Society today has its fair share of eccentric people that love to flaunt their wealth and prestige. I'm thinking of the likes of Floyd Mayweather, Conor McGregor, or maybe like the Kardashians, perhaps. <laughs> you said that with so little passion. Well, I don't All know. these fighters and then... Yeah, well, the I actually know stuff about the fighters. The <laughs> Kardashians I know nothing about. But they do like to flaunt their wealth mm -hmm. and uh, prestige. But these guys have nothing on Caligula. He took weird to a whole new level. So let's have a look at some of his greatest hits. So I thought rather than just go through his whole life, I'd just tell like the best stories about him, or what I think the best stories are, and just tell a bit of his upbringing because... It's easy to see, like, when someone makes these these decisions that he makes, that they're weird or they're messed up or whatever, but his upbringing sort of might explain why he may have made these decisions. 
Caligula was known for throwing his wealth around. He would spend mountains of money on different ventures, from the practical aqueducts and harbours to the cultural, theatres and temples, and also the downright bazaar. Now get this. He had hundreds of Roman merchant ships build him a two-mile-long floating bridge across the Bay of Borley, I think I'm pronouncing that right, for him to spend a grand total of two days riding back back and forth across it with his favourite horse. Then, presumably, like a small child, got bored of it and left it there to rot. So he built a giant floating bridge on a body of water just so he could ride up and down on it. Was it useful for anything? No, did that, anyone that, use it? That's that was it. That was its mm. entire use. And apparently, he did that as sort of a he was sticking it up to the Egyptian leaders. Someone said that he couldn't build anything of note or something like that. So he built that, and he just rode up and down on his horse. And apparently, it had stations where you could stop and have a drink on it and stuff. Nice. Like that. But that was its sole purpose, and he used it for a grand total of two days. Hey, he's so just th- living his best life. Well, if you've got the money and you've got the time, why not spend <laughs> it on a giant floating bridge? Fair enough. So we're starting off small there. Another story. Once he held a banquet with his closest followers for the sole purpose of letting them know that he could do whatever he wanted to them and they couldn't do a single thing about it. His biographer, Suetonius, who, again, remember, wrote this after the fact, so this could be twisted in any way. He wrote that Caligula said to the people in attendance that, I quote, remember that I have the right to do anything to anybody. And apparently he would say this often to those around him. So imagine how unnerving that would be. So if you think about it like you're on a bus and a random just turns to you and says, I can do whatever I want to you at any time. That would be scary, wouldn't it? Yeah. Then, But then picture a Roman leader doing that. Yeah, and I'm sure there are countless other leaders that have said that sort of thing. I don't think he's that much different yet. You haven't convinced me. Well, I mean, he held his sole purpose of that banquet was just to tell anyone that, hey, I can have you killed or do whatever I want to. You. You're not shocked by not that? Yet. You don't think not that's yet. crazy? Okay. Well. Not for a lead, I know. Yeah, well, I guess maybe it's been done before. Well, how about try this next story on for size? One of his more famous greatest hits were his military campaigns, one of which saw him lead his army to the English Channel in an attempt to take Britain. However, this failed, and he insisted that he couldn't return without a victory, so he waged war on Neptune, god of the seas. His soldiers were ordered to whip the seas, then before turning around to head back home, he ordered his troops to plunder the seas and collect seashells to put on their helmets as trophies of war. Is that weird enough for you? That's a bit weird. That's bizarre. You've gone all this way to, like, the coast, probably of France or something like that, and then he gives up and he's like, was it not what, not France? You're looking at me funny. I don't know. Where, where does it say it was? I, did, I didn't say. Well, but he's... The English Channel. Oh, the English Channel. I see. Yeah, so it's on the edge, probably on the edge of France, and he's gone there to um, wage war, and instead he wages war on a made-up water god. Was it made up to them, though? I don't know. He just, he just wanted to get a victory by the sounds of it. I wonder strange. what the soldiers were thinking. They were probably like, what the hell? What are you <laughs> doing, mate? I wonder if any of them were even scared, though. Because well, they believed in the gods. They were... Well, pr- probably more practical to fear him over the gods because this bloke could actually have you killed. He just... <laughs> he, remember, he holds banquets to say to people, I can kill you or do whatever I want to you. So I'd probably fear him over a god of the sea. Mm. Continuing on, Caligula continued his childhood habit of playing dress-ups. Maybe this is because of his parents dressing him up into a little character, Little Boots, but uh, a bit of psychology coming into play here, but it's said that he was very fond of dressing in strange clothes, from wearing women's clothes, lavish shoes, and accessories. His biographer wrote that he did this often as he was eager to, and I quote, appear to be anything rather than human, a human being, and the emperor. So there's a bit of cross-dressing and stuff going on here. At his and hers history, we believe everyone is equal. So so this being made, made out to be strange is only because it was written that way. We're very mm. inclusive here. So if you want to cross-dress, that's fine. Yeah. And Caligula may have been the first cross-dresser. Who knows? Oh, I doubt I'm that. Sure, I'm sure not. But for the sake <laughs> of the story, yes, he was for the sake <laughs> of the story. Earlier, I mentioned that Caligula uh, liked to ride his favorite horse, which he, which he named... Insiticus. Well, he loved his horse so much that he gave his horse 
his own house which was made out of marble and even had an ivory manger. Such was his love of his horse that he even intended to appoint in Sitticus to the high office of council, which to me sounds like a very important position. He was going to put his horse like into a decision-making position in the Senate. You're nodding along like, yeah, that's normal. No, I knew this one. Oh, you, oh you've heard of that yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know it was linked to him, but yes, I knew this. But that, that's insane. Like, <laughs> that's crazy. Okay, well, I, I need to up my game, apparently. I was reading that thinking that's weird. <laughs> Steph's looking at me. I know no one can see it. Steph's looking at me nodding, going, hmm, sure. That seems like a rational decision. <laughs> I don't think it's okay. rational, but... Like, oh, yeah. are there better options? Like, we know politicians these days. Maybe a horse can make a better choice. Oh, do you hear what um, Donald Trump's doing? Or who's the prime? Uh, oh, <laughs> what's his name? Oh no, who's the prime minister of America? There's no prime minister of America. Oh, sorry, um, president. Who's the president of uh, America? I'm not American. Biden. Oh, <laughs> do you hear what Joe Biden did? Oh, yeah, he's elected his horse into the Senate. Oh, yeah, fair enough. Well, I'm not saying it sounds. I'm a bit normal, worried about you. I'm a bit worried about but you. But I'm saying maybe it's a better choice than a human being. Mm-hmm. Well, I that suppose a horse agendas. can't really make any decisions. So someone that's neutral, it's like a random, yeah. Someone that's neutral might be the best person for the position. Whoa, mind blown! Mm-hmm. We need to elect Big horses brain, and yeah. horses and animals to <laughs> parliament. Just not cats. Yeah, not oh, cats. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty. They know what they're doing. And last week we spoke about dolphins. Maybe dolphins are smart Maybe enough dolphins. to. Yeah. We've gone really off track here, but that's okay. <laughs> Remember how earlier I told you that he went to war with the Senate in a bid to gain full control? Well, he certainly made his point in that regard, as he was known for to have his high-ranking senators run miles in front of his chariot as a form of torture slash amusement. Oh my God! He is well known for not only being weird, but rather nasty and, and having. Sorry, rather than being just weird, he had a rather nasty and sadistic streak as well. He was also known for his creativity in the realms of torture. So he came up with lots of different methods of torturing people, which is art in a weird way. Oh, you cannot say that. (laughs) Well, I mean, technically. Those poor senators, they're like meant to be braining people, not Mm. running in front of a chariot. Funny that you should use the word braining. Brain Brainy. next story. Braining. Brain next story. What I said. While preparing to sacrifice a bull to the gods during a large ceremony, he decided at the last second that instead of swinging the large mallet that he was brandishing into the bull's head, he instead at the last second turned the weapon onto one of the nearby priests, bludgeoning in, bludgeoning in the back of his head. He then proceeded to laugh with childlike joy as the man lay dying on the floor. He did say that he could do whatever he wanted to anyone at any time, so I guess he was just backing up his earlier statements. Goodness. So he did that on a whim. Like, he had this bull in front of him, and the last thing he went, no, I'm going to kill this priest, and hmm. smash this priest to the skull. And, hmm, you're, you're sitting agreeing thing. there. Like, I'm hmm. not agreeing. I was actually horrified if you were looking at my facial I certainly, expression. I certainly I, hope so. But the, your reaction when you hmm, was That's like... That's not what I did. Okay, were well, you just thinking about it, were you? No, I was horrified and you obviously can't read (laughs) my reaction. I'm so sorry. It looked like you're okay with that. Oh my goodness. He was famous for throwing lavish parties at which he would make love to his sister in front of horrified onlookers. Oh, finally a reaction. You can't just go over that. That's disgusting. Finally a reaction from you. I was sort of saving his messed up ones for the end. Yeah, so he would make love with his sister. But not just like... That's gross. In front of horrified... Surely that's not true. In front of horrified onlookers. He was also very fond of sleeping with his allies' wives and then bragging about it to their faces later on. Records suggest that he might have been a sex addict and was like full-blown out of control. But that doesn't excuse the things we've just heard. This man was deeply, deeply ill. So finally I get a a reaction out of it. Yes, he allegedly slept with his sister in front of people. yeah. Yeah. So this guy was... Are you starting to now realise he's messed up? Yeah. So I could go on forever and ever, even more on even more depraved actions, but I'll save that for the end of the podcast. Part five: Caligula's undoing. After four long years at the helm of the Roman Empire, with wild sex orgies, unnecessary military campaigns, dress-ups, bizarre forms of torture, and the execution of multiple people, some of which were his family members. And God knows what else he got up to. It was time for Caligula Caligula to go the way of his brothers. 
After depleting the empire's wealth quicker than it could be replenished, the Senate finally got the bright idea to assassinate Caligula and end his reign of terror. As a result, he was the first Roman emperor to be assassinated. So he has that honour. You're looking up in the air. Do you know otherwise? Where did you find that information? It was written in one of my sources. Do you have something that suggests about otherwise? Julius Caesar. He's was literally he... named after Julius Caesar. And Julius Caesar was yeah, assassinated. Yeah, Julius Caesar was like his great-great-grandfather. Yeah, and he was assassinated by getting stabbed in the back. Okay, note to self. Check your references more <laughs> thoroughly. So he doesn't have that honour. He's just a copycat. He wanted to copy his great-great-grandfather. <laughs> there you go. I was going to say that's another one to add to his greatest hits, but no, unfortunately not. Those that conspired against the emperor also stabbed his wife and daughter to death so as to end their line and start afresh with a new line. Caligula was replaced by Claudius, who was the next chosen heir to the Roman Empire. And twist of fate, that was actually Caligula's uncle. So he'd killed all other family members, I believe, having them executed. But he left Claudius around because he was he had some deformity and he was like sort of... So he wasn't like a threat to him. Yeah, yeah, he was seen as not a threat and turns out he uh, became the new leader. Mm. So lesson, if you're going to execute your family members, kill them all. That is it's not a, a horrible. Lesson. That's a horrible, horrible message. No but I'm saying lesson. like probably a more appropriate uh, phrase would be leave no stone unturned. That means if you, the if, same if thing If you're going to kill your con- family and... We yeah. don't condone no of course of course not but Mm. maybe if he was more thorough he hey hey, he might have survived have such i'm sorry i'm of course being uh silly Mm, i think i don't know so i've ended this rather suddenly but that is quite deliberate because realistically we could could do a double episode on his life but i feel here at his and hers history we're all about the juicy details so i'm just going to finish off with a list of some more of Caligula's well-known greatest hits. So he's got heaps and heaps and heaps more that I couldn't possibly fit in. And I don't really feel like doing a double episode. because <laughs> You just don't feel like it. No, we'll, we'll start with something fresh every week. But I'll read you off this yeah, list. Yeah, give other... me some of your top Here's some other things on his list. So choices. These are quick fire ones. I'd like to get your reaction on, on some of these. Caligula was seen as quite ugly. He was tall, thin, and very hairy. And because of this, he made it a capital offence to mention the word goat around him. (laughs) So he made it a law that you couldn't say goat because maybe he might have thought that they were referring to him. Probably what he, yeah, got cold. Yeah, maybe behind his back, I don't know. He was the very first emperor to call himself a god, so he has that under his belt. Maybe, who knows now. I'm now. probably going to have to double check my references <laughs> after this, but he, he claimed himself to be a god, mm-hmm. so he thought he was that superior. He would often take gold coins with him and throw them on the ground just to feel them under his feet. So that's Mm -hmm. a waste of wealth and money. That's him flaunting that. While Caligula was still alive, he erected a temple dedicated to himself and placed a life-size golden statue in his own image inside. Each day he had the statue dressed in whatever whatever (laughs) he was wearing and Rome's wealthiest citizens would make offerings to the emperor there. Gifts included flamingos, peacocks, 